Hello, good morning, good evening, good afternoon. My name is Chris Legospi. And today we are doing a brand new live stream series. And um, this series is going to be focused mostly on design and specifically um, how to how to more about how to see versus how to draw and how to how to train yourself. So I'm going to give you I'm going to eh, I'm going to give you some practical uh, methods and ideas that you can use in your work when you're drawing from models or reference, and that will really help you to draw better by having a stronger design sensibility. And the first um, first lesson in this series I'm planning is is observing shapes in heads and faces. Uh, the next one will be. Um, um will be the figure and then the following one will be um, uh, the landscape as well and then we'll also touch on a value which is important very important part of design so shape first and then value we're going to start with um, um the definition of shape and um, and, and contour and and kind of where this idea comes from and then we're, we're gonna uh, i'm gonna show you some of the tools that i use the ways that i look look at shape and look for shape and then we're, we're gonna do some demonstrations and go through a couple examples and then i'll talk about some homework and ways that you can improve let's begin by talking about def defining the terms here we'll quickly define what i mean by shape um generally when you refer to the shape of a head you're thinking about the, the contour, which is the outer shape of the head. And um, another important thing about shape is that, or the contour, it also represents the amount of two-dimensional space your drawing occupies. As artists, as draftsmen, as painters, we working on a flat two-dimensional surface. So when we begin our drawings, especially if we're doing complex realistic drawings, which I'm sure uh, if you're if you're here, we all want to do these type of drawings. The um, the uh, knowing uh, uh, knowing how much space our our heads and our figures are going to take up on our on our paper on our canvas is very important. So that's what I mean by by shape. Generally, I'm referring to the contour. Now, obviously, there's the outer contour. And then there's interior shapes or interior contours. So there's the, the the outer shape of the whole thing. And then there's interior shapes that we need to evaluate as, well, evaluate as well. And generally, I like to think of them as as the major shapes first, the major shape, which is the general contour, which uh, when you're drawing portraits and faces, obviously includes the head, uh, the, the head, the hair, and things like uh, costumes or hats or whatever they may be wearing. So, so all of that would include to the contour, but then you have secondary shapes, uh, which would be the shapes of the, the eye, even the, the unique shape of the hair itself is a shape. And then the um, shapes of the features. And then eventually you, you'll want to also become familiar with shapes of the shadow as well. But, but generally there's, two main shapes that um, we need to worry about at first, to address at first, define at first, which is the, the whole shape of our subject or our for our drawing and painting, which is the contour, and um, the other major larger shapes uh, and for a portrait. So that would be the shape of the, the face, and then eventually the shape of the features. And, um, this idea of of examining shape defining shape the reason why you know it's so important is because it allows us to begin the process of realistic drawing this uh, idea of shape I, I didn't invent this it's something that was handed down to me and to you through the realistic academic tradition that came from europe um, the uh, specifically uh, the Italians who invented the realism when they started to um, 
started to, to begin the, the practice and study of doing realistic representational drawing, the first thing that they had to address was that um, they had to simplify the complexity of, of the natural world as much as possible. And um, that's where the idea of, of doing shapes uh, comes into place because in, in a way, we're not really copying the exact outline we see, we're designing. So this is very much um, uh, design thinking that we're doing here uh, with shape. Um, and one of the most famous examples is the Barg plate. So comment below if you have um, have Charles Barg's uh, drawing book or have seen these Barg plates, or maybe you have tried one. Comment below. Let me know where if you've ever tried one of these or have seen this book. And it's it's a very famous, uh, Charles Barg was a very famous drawing teacher and author uh, from France. He uh, pioneered realism um, um, in, in the early French ateliers and French academies. And one of the ways he taught was he, he taught students uh, to first start by copying these these uh, uh, these plates, these bar plates, which were uh, very very realistic and high quality, high highly finished uh, drawings, and and generally they were based off of a plaster cast. And this example here, you could see that the image on the right is the finished drawing. And the image on the left is uh, what we call the block-in or the lay-in. And you can see the beautiful, clear, crisp outline is being followed here. You see that? Crisp, sharp. And notice that, um, you know, number one, there's lots of straights. Very interesting. Lots of straights and lots of semi-straights. And number two is that it's very, very simplified. Now, obviously, the drawing on the right is a is of a plaster cast, which is a simplified version of 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 a human being. Uh, so, so it's 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 uh, an artist, another artist simplified a complex thing. But this just shows you that the uh, how this science and this this um, practice of drawing the shape, focusing on the, the outer shape when you begin the drawing, and then the secondary shapes. Remember, I, I mentioned the secondary shape, so the shape of the face as well is a big part of realistic drawing, specifically the, the academic realistic drawing from, from the European tradition. And here's one more example of a barg plate. This one's a little bit more complex. You can see, um, you know, this. even though this is a drawing from a sculpture, from a plaster cast, it has very complex hair and things. And look at the beautiful simplicity we see, right? So let's just quickly look at the bottom. If you look on the finished drawing on the right, right? See the bumps and the hairs, right? Um, on the side of the beard. But look on our, our um, original lay-in, our block-in, beautiful straight. Straight, 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 straight. And that's that's what we want. That's what we're going to cover today. We don't begin the drawing like this. We begin with simplicity. And that's really why this drawing is important. That's really, you know, the one, one of the lessons that that the that the early academic realist um, discovered is that we cannot possibly, match nature, copy nature. It's impossible to get the highest realism in our drawings. It takes it takes a design sensibility and it takes um, simplicity, simplifying all the complexity of nature. So let's talk about some tools that we can use. Um, these are just things that, that, that I do, um, things that I've trained myself to, to look for and to use. Um, in, in my drawings. So um, number one, let's look for the extremities. Extremities means the highest point, the lowest point, the, the leftmost point, the widest point, uh, and the rightmost point. Um, 
not sure if that makes sense, but um, so if we are starting to lay in our drawing and start to draw the 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 contour right the first major shape that we need to establish we need to know is how tall is our drawing and how wide is our drawing and wh where does it all fit so in this quick example here just quickly look at the highest point i think we could all see the highest point would be here right this peak of the hair everything else curves downward the lowest point um well not including the the bust but let's just say if it was the hair this would be the lowest point i believe that's where the hair ends might this might be a little piece but but anyway assuming that this is the end of the hair so that would be the lowest point of of the of the of the general outer contour if you include not just the face but but the hair so we're just looking for the major contour right now so that would be the highest point the lowest point the upper and lower extremity now let's look for the widest point so how far to the right on, on our canvas or paper does it go well it's, it's it's arguable it could be this upper little hair curve or it could be this one um but they feel pretty close i think this one is probably the most not by much by a fraction of a millimeter, probably, but um, in this in this example, so this would be the rightmost point. Now let's go to the leftmost point. Um, and I think it's clearly this little bump of hair right here. So this would be the left extremity. This would be the right extremity, or top or upper extremity and lower extremity. So I hope that makes sense. The, um, that's the first thing you look for, is the extremity, is how, how far we go, how low we go, how to the right, and how, to, how far to the left we can go. And this is really, really, really helpful for, for placement. Okay, next, let's talk about corners. So what are corners? The idea of corners is quite strange because corners really is a, um, in a geometric sense, you know, when I think of corners, I think of this, right? A hard corner, perhaps something like that, a 45 degree angle, a 90 degree angle, things like that. So now we know that in order to have a, cor a proper corner, you need a straight line and straight lines don't, don't occur on organic things, definitely don't occur in human beings. But again, as artists, we want to start to think and see the world in this way, in this geometric way. So um, we want to be able to look for corners in organic things. And um, what I do is I start with the obvious. So in this plaster cast, this is a great example. Um, where are some obvious examples? Well, I see in the hair this really sharp corner here this one's clearly corner there uh, at the top this has a very uh, has a curve um, not quite a sharp corner but there is a corner there we'll talk about that in a moment let's look for the obvious okay so there's a hair here as you go down and in um, where else at the bottom of this ponytail or this braid, I see a corner there. Um, where else? On her chin, chin is an obvious corner, even though it's more of an internal idea. Uh, the point of the nose, obvious corner. And this lower part of the ear, uh, the hair, excuse me, it's an obvious corner. And where the neck turns into the shoulder, that's a nice corner too. Now it's not as obvious. It's, of course, there's a curve there because it's a human being, but we can make it a corner. We'll talk about ways how to draw, how to how to handle curves. Um, but that's just some obvious corners that I see. Uh, you may be able to see more. Um, this this little one here, and we'll look at some more examples. But generally, the first thing I look for 
uh, our corners, and I start with the obvious corners. Now let's talk about um, direction change. So another way um, that I look for the contour or the shape is direction changes. And um, um, direction change also happens at corners, so that's one way to look for them. So let's begin with that, and then we'll, we'll look for some more subtle ones. So let's see. The first one that pops into my head is, is the nose, because that's a sharp corner, very sharp. It's almost very straight. And you could see that it, it changes direction from the, the top plane of the nose, and then boom, quickly goes to the right, un to the underplane of the nose. You see that? Another one is the chin. Front plane of the chin, underplane of the chin. So that's a direction change. Um, we, we also have one um, from the top plane of the head. Now it's a curve. We'll talk about curves in a moment, but you see how the nice curve goes from the top plane and then changes direction to the, the back of the head, goes downward. You see that? Top plane and then changes direction. And it changes direction nicely at this uh, core shadow, which is a great way to look for corners if you have this kind of lighting. So that's a nice direction change happening there. It's, it's a nice corner. And of course, in a way, it's almost, almost uh, you can you can say it's two direction changes. There's a little bump there, a curve there, and then it changes direction and it goes down. It clearly goes woo, way down. And there's another one from the the down the downward movement of this fabric to the shoulder. You see that? Mm. Nice corner there. Obviously, here's one here, a direction change here. But that's uh, that's part of the sculpture, but that's that's another good example. Um, how about how about in the front? Does it change direction from the front plane to the top plane? Yes, it does. I would say it's right about here. It goes from here, and then mm, changes direction. And of course, there's a nice curve, but that's a direction change. So we already got the beginning of a nice, nice drawing, right? Uh, once we understand um, these direction changes. Here's one at the, uh, I just caught this at, at the, I believe it's the breast here. Front plane and then boom, under plane. It's a nice corner. Direction change makes corners. So that they, they do work together. That's another way that I look for the outer shape, or shapes in general. Now let's talk about um, how to draw curves, and it relates to straights. Now, um, first of all, you might be wondering, why would you want a straight? Well, remember that what we are trying to do as realists is to represent the natural world. The natural world is extremely complex. Therefore, in order for us to have any chance of getting it right, getting it to look good, look decent, we got we got to simplify. Remember that earlier Barg example where we saw um, the beard, right? The beard was like like this, but the artist chose to, mm, right, in the early lay-in, make it a total straight, and that's sort of what's happening here. Sort of what's happening here. You can see that. Uh, straights come into play because what we f at first we want to we need to know how much space it takes up and we need to know its contour so if something is complex or it has curves we need to also turn them into straights and straights are useful for many reasons number one is just a, a more some it's an easier tool to measure with a straight line much easier to measure with than a curve and then um, straights, uh, a lot of ways, straight lines, straight marks are easier to draw. Um, you know, we're all we're all trained, or hopefully we're all trained, if you're not now, to do these kind of marks. 
but curves, mm, right? They take like a little bit more more dexterity. I mean, look how bumpy my curve is. I'm using the computer here. So um, straights just make our life easier. They make measuring easier, and they give us the ability to simplify quickly something very complex like a human being. So that's why we use straights. Now let's talk about uh, curves. How do you make a straight out of a curve? Well, what I like to do is to look for what's called the apex. Apex is a geometric term. Comment below if you uh, any math people out here. I, I don't. <laughs> I'm not sure if any any artists out here. The apex is the highest point of a curve. It's really where the curve changes direction, where the curve starts to turn from another direction. Now, this example here, this curve goes up, starts to go up and to the right, and then it changes direction and starts to go down. You see that? Same with this one. It starts to go up and to the out and to the right, and then down and back in to the left at the apex. So we want to look for the peak of the curve. And the reason why we do that is because the apex allows us to boom, boom, create a straight or a corner. And that's what we want. We want to begin our drawing looking for opportunities to make straights and corners. So let's examine this guy here this has a beautiful curve at the top of his head where is the apex comment below where is the apex do you see it it's the highest point in the curve remember we want to look for the extremity so i would argue the apex apex is right about here because as this curve reaches the apex it starts to change direction. It starts to flatten out and curve downward. Here it's curving up, 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 up to the right. Now it's going downwards. It's going up, 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 and then it peaks, reaches the apex, and then curves downward. So that would be the apex of the curve. Now, obviously, if we were to draw this thing at, and you know, only say, okay, well, Chris told me to draw the apex, so I'm going to do that. And then that. Now clearly we've lost <laughs> the shape, right? We don't we don't we don't want that. So what we want is to add, is to is to now look at the other curves. So we made we basically made two curves now. We want to look at the other curve and try to find their apex. So from here to here, comment below, where do you find the apex? Where do you see the apex? Where do you observe it to be? Mm, I, I would argue it's here, it's roughly here. It doesn't have to be perfect because it starts to change direction. It goes here and then mm, to the right, it goes up to the right. Then it goes, starts to go curves back to the right. And same with this side. We'll say the apex is here. There's one, it's actually multiple. I would put one more here. So now when we draw this, let's say we were doing our lay-in, like, okay, now it's starting to make a little bit more sense, right? Starting to represent a curve using straights because we were drawing at the apex. And there's one more here, I would argue right there. You see that? That's the importance of the apex. Here's one. Um, this is this is a nice, like almost spherical one. Those can be a little tricky. Um, if you want to practice, start with the obvious sharper curve. Here's a really sharp curve right here. You see that? Right. And where do you see the apex to be? It's clearly, clearly here. Right. It goes to the right, and then it starts to go down and to the left. So that would be a clear, boom. Boom, you can even put one more here to represent the underplane. It's also there right here. 
So that's the apex, two apex in that in that curve. Let's see if we can find one more in this example. Um, not really. This is quite straight. If you notice, lots of straights from the head, from the the brow, right down to the uh, the uh, the beard. Very straight. And from the, the the jaw, the beard, where it meets the jaw to the to the point of the beard, very straight. Boom. Um, well, here's here's a here's a curve that has an obvious apex. This the, the this shadow, this brow. Uh, socket, eye socket with a brow. So a very obvious curve, clear apex right here. Changes direction, boom, boom. Now we have another curve, just looking at this bottom. Let me zoom in real quick here. So looking at this bottom, we can see a nice, beautiful curve. So I would say to represent it, we're gonna need at least two apexes. So first, I would say, let's look for the obvious, most obvious one. Clearly, there's a movement down, and then it starts to go to the left, right? And that's the clear apex there. And then it goes from the left and starts to curve up. So now we have, we have more of a natural curve. What do we do? Well, we find the apex of the curve. The curve goes down, uh, excuse me, up and to the left, and it starts to curve up sharply. Right. It does change direction at a curve. So where is the height of that direction change? The beginning of it. Well, you just make make your best guess. I would say it's right there. And then now, now we can represent that eye socket and cast shadow. So that's that's a that's a the importance of finding the apex. And one more important tool. This is not so much related to corners and straights and um, line drawing, it's more of a value idea, but one simple tool, way you think to look for to help you find the contour is value contrast. Because really, if you think about line, lines in the natural world don't really exist. They're a man-made construct. Lines really are where two values meet that's where you get a line so for for um when we want to analyze the shape we clearly look for areas of value contrast now this is a white plaster sculpture uh, in front of a dark dark almost black background so you can clearly see right clear contrast boom 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 um but what about you know more of these interior ideas. Well, here's a cast shadow. Cast shadow, clear contrast from light and shadow. Same with the eye, this cast shadow of the eye, underplane of the nose, value contrast there. So this is nice when you have academic lighting or single source lighting, it's really nice, um, really easy to see. And you could see the the mustache. Mm, 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 mm. So um, you want to look for value contrast. Okay, this example is a little less obvious. Obviously, the background is not black, but it's still dark enough that the the white plaster cast sculpture comes forward. You can clearly see, right, clear value contrast happening there. Even um, in this area, right, uh, the dark part of the shadow does contrast slightly. It is slightly darker than the values you can see there. But here it starts to get, right, this little shape right here, the hair, right? You, it's really the same value as the background, almost the exact same color. So you can, um, you're gonna have to use the other tools we talked about there and here even though it's in shadow, clear, value contrast, um, smaller shape of the, um, of the eye. You can see the value contrast happening in the underplane of the eye. Um, this is the eye, lower eyelid, where it meets the, the cheek in, in light. You can see the clear contrast there. 
even in the hair. There's a little bit of shadow here. So you can see the clear contrast there, a little bit of shadow there. So uh, value contrast, very important tool. OK, let's took a, take a look at some examples. Um, and then we'll do a couple demonstrations. So here we have beautiful drawing by Alphonse Mucha. Comment below if you are a Mucha fan. I think uh, probably everybody watching this has, has seen um, or knows Mucha's posters, but he does wonderful um, fine art as well. Um, and you can clearly see the beautiful use of contour and shape. And that's why I wanted to show you this, because he took this complexity of hair, that, for example, this, this girl at the bottom, and really simplified the masses of hair into these shapes. Even um, uh, these are much more obvious than uh, this profile view, much more obvious here. But then when we get to the this girl on the right, when we get to her her hair hanging down, the sides, very clear, simplified contour. But then as we get to the bottom, then we have to start to do use our tools, corners, extremity, extremity, right? To to simplify the idea. I'm sure the drawing started this way. You know, uh, Muka also uh, European artist comes from the European tradition of realism. So uh, the drawing did st start this way. Uh, but as you can see, he employs it uh, quite a bit. OK, this is an example by Mr. John Singer Sargent. I think we're all familiar with uh, Sargent here, arguably one of the greatest artists that ever lived. And uh, fantastic. Everyone remembers, you know, comment below when you when you hear the the word the name sergeant what what comes to mind comment below what comes to mind when you, when you hear sergeant or when you see sergeant's work probably most people think of um uh watercolor or or a la prima or portrait artist or master you know but one thing that sergeant doesn't get um often not recognized for is incredible design sense he was an incredible designer both in value, um, obviously, and shape. Um, and this is a um, beautiful drawing. You can clearly see the beautiful use of, of simplified contour shape happening in the hair, right? We got the clear corner direction change there. This curve has a clear apex, apex, direction change. Direction change, straight, straight, corner, straight, direction change. In the face, we have straight, subtle direction change. The chin, you could argue the chin is very, very pointy. So you can argue that, you know, you can, <laughs> that becomes, you know, it looks like the Joker now, it's more stylized. So you have to add the, um, Add a little tiny um, two apexes to that. To that, you want to round off your your lay in a little bit there. Your analysis and uh, the hair, boom, 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 boom. Beautiful sharp curve has a clear apex there. Corner, 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 corner. Notice I just simplified. Oh. This you could you could argue it's two, but I think it's more elegant to make it one, two straights, straight down, corner, direction change, corner, direction change, boom, boom, boom. And then when we go to the hair, right, we have a beautiful curve, but we know every curve must have an apex. Boom, beautiful curve, every curve must have an apex. Boom, 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 boom. Now um, let's look at the neck here. Boom. The curve of this uh, collar. Boom. Beautiful curve happening here. You could argue that it's just really a relaxed straight. 
I don't want to say it's a curve, but in my mind, it's a relaxed straight. <laughs> That's another way. Just like this. This is clearly not a, a super straight line drawn with a ruler. It's drawn freehand, but you could argue that it's a just a nice relaxed straight. It's a straight with a little bit of curve. So, um, but yeah. So these this is the contour analysis of John Sargent. So this is a great homework exercise. But Muka would be another great choice as well. Okay, here we have a male head. Um, so let's put our tools to use. So first, what is the upper extremity, lower extremity, uh, right extremity, leftmost extremity? Um, upper extremity, I, I would argue, is this point of the hair to the left, to the, excuse me, to the right. Mm. You could say it's this peak of his hair or it's the jaw, the apex of that curve of the jaw. The lower is clearly the chin. The left mm, could be the ear, could also be the hair. I would say it's the hair. Okay, for sure the hair, take that back. All right, so now we have our extremities. Now let's begin our analysis. Um, let's look for, let, first let's start with the obvious. What's, what's obvious? Well. Um, the ears has a nice obvious direction change, right? Here, and then boom, changes direction down. And then from here, changes direction from the left side to underneath, the underside of the ear, that's one. And the neck, it's a clear, obvious corner. Um, neck to the collars, jacket collar. Now on the right, we have an obvious one. This one's pretty sharp, pretty obvious. This hair can be, we can go straight. We don't have to remember like the beard and the bark plate. We don't have to draw every little strand. We can just shoop, cut right through it like a knife. The space is more important. The details come later. Oh, hey, I see a little obvious one here. There's a nice straight happening here. And then it hmm, changes direction. When I, when I mean straight, it's clearly organic hair. But uh, if I go from this point, I go from this point to this point, I see a clear mm, straight. I don't need to worry about all the little hairs, right? Um, so that's the obvious ones. Let's let's start to uh, straighten out our curves. So now we're just left with curves. So we got a nice curve of his hair here. Right, so where would the apex be? Well, you could argue that it's roughly here where his, his part would be. Um, but to go from here to here, I think would be too abrupt to go from the top to this apex. So I'm, I'm gonna add one more curve. So take this curve and add an apex, and that'll be roughly here. So now I feel confident making that connection. And then from here to here, I feel confident going through all the hair details. Well, I take that back. I take that back. Maybe I can do one more. There's a nice clear apex because it goes from here and then to the right. It goes from there and that mm, subtle direction change. Um, the face, you could go from the hair to the, to the apex of the cheek fairly easily, curve down to the jaw, from the jaw, there's the apex, the jaw to the apex of the chin, there's a curve in this chin, but there's a clear apex, so we can definitely simplify that. From here, I would say right where my line ended up, that's kind of the apex there. And, the, and then another apex curve is right here where the jaw changes direction. So you could argue that, or you can make the analysis that that would be enough to begin the block in. And then let's look at the hair from here to here, right? Value contrast, hair and skin, mm, straight. And value contrast, skin to hair here. That's a clear straight. Right, a relaxed straight from here to the curve. You know, we could mm, just cut right through all of those hair details. And from here, there's a clear corner. 
here. So you can do it like that, do a relaxed straight. This is a nice, beautiful straight from the, the ear, the hair where the hair meets the ear. Boom. Boom. Cur cur straighten out or add uh, an apex at the curve of the ear. So that's a pretty nice um, analysis there. Um, let me include the, uh, the shoulder. Okay, so we have female uh, with long hair. Let's look for the extremities. The uppermost, clearly the it's the apex of the curve of her hair, of her head here. So you could argue it's right about here. Um, the lower, if you just look at her head, it's clearly the the, the apex of her, the curve of her chin. And then um, the hair could be this little guy, this little bit of hair, this little bit of hair. Now, obviously hair, uh, we do have a large margin of errors. For me, hair, um, I rarely copy hair. I use it as a, I change the shape of hair all the time uh, to better create a better design. So uh, let's just say it's, it's they're about the same for, for now. Uh, it could be this one, could be this one, but uh, clearly it's, it's this one. So it's the bottom of her hair. Uh, the right and left extremity would be, it's a nice long straight here. So it could be roughly where that, straight starts to curve inward back to the left there and then same thing on the right we have a beautiful long curve on the left part of her hair there's a clear apex to me it's here and that would be the leftmost oh, of course you can also say that part of the hair as well so that's the extremity let's look for obvious corners don't really see any because very soft there's an obvious straight here now, an obvious straight on the right means there must be a corner, and it does change direction. You guys see that? See that curve? See this curve here? It goes from pretty much straight up and down, then it goes to the left, up and to the left. So where does that happen? Where's the apex? It's roughly there. So we could argue, or we could analyze it to be there. Um, beautiful curve here, but it does change direction. Goes from top plane left to side plane down. So where's the apex? It's clearly there. So we can go from here and then down. There's an interior curve, a con concave curve, and then it has um, it's a it's a it's a pretty spherical circular type, almost a perfect circle, you could say. So I would need a couple of apexes to square it out. Um, and then the lower part of the hair, I'm just gonna ignore this hair. Remember like the Barg example, it goes from here, this little wispy bit of hair. To me, it's a corner because it's an obvious straight. Obvious straight must have corners. So the bottom is fairly straight. I'm just going to design it like that, really cut into it. We have a lot of stuff happening here. What do we do? Do we go like this and go crazy? No, I think the best solution is the most simplest solution, especially at the beginning. I'm going to group all of this, these little wispy hairs, go to the apex where it changes direction, and then come back down and to the right. Um, let's let's look at her face now. So the clear straight underneath the curve of the chin that happens because the curve of the chin looks like this right well there's two apexes if you follow the straight you follow the straight where they meet the peak must be the apex of this of this curve the apex of this curve is, is here, but if you, from the middle, from the middle, if you draw a horizontal line through the middle, a straight, from there to there will help you find the apex. That's what I'm doing there. Um, chin and jaw slightly covered by hair, but we can analyze it to be that. Hairline. 
we can make a soft, relaxed curve. Cheek from the side plane of the jaw and cheek to the where the cheek meets the orbital bone. And then uh, clear straight there. Clear straight must have a corner. So there's a clear direction change there. Clear corner and direction change there. It's almost straight, but you can soften the soften the curve a little, soften that straight a little bit. And that's pretty much our analysis of the major contours there, the outer contour and then the contour of her face. So that's in this lesson. I want to thank you for joining me. Um, the replay will be available on YouTube. And um, if you do any drawings, please uh, share them on social media uh, or share them in the comments. You know, make sure to tag me. Um, and if you found this video helpful, definitely share this video as well. And I will see you in the next live stream.